Seahawks today coming up in just a few moments from right now. Before we do, I want to make sure that you turn on those notifications so you can be part of our mailbags here on the channel so you never miss a moment of what's going on. And I got to tell you, we love answering you guys' questions here on the channel. We do this because of you, and I'm willing to answer anything. So subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, so you can be a part of our mailbag each and every week here on Seahawks Today. It is Seahawks Today by Chat Sports. Tyler Jones here with you. You have questions, and you're in luck. I have answers. Let's go ahead and get to those questions here on our mailbag edition of Seahawks Today. Our first question comes in with the hashtag Seahawks and hashtag Papa Seahawk. After Tariq Wolin's pick six against the Lions, has he solidified his roster spot, or is he in the realm of CB1, PS, I'll have my Seahawk German beer cup ready for Sunday. Glad you got your uh, your cup ready to go. Your uh, cup for uh, Sunday starting early right away, Nick. Uh, Tariq Wollen, yeah. No question. No questions asked. He is your starting outside corner for the foreseeable future. I know that, you know, the Seahawks got a couple of guys injured and, and whatnot. We're going to see others come back later in the year. But no question about it, Nick. Tariq Wallen's that guy. He is that dude. And we talked about this earlier in the week on the channel. We broke down, showed you the numbers from PFF, and he's literally gotten better each and every week. And at this rate, if he continues at where he's at right now, he'll be in the Pro Bowl discussion when it's all said and done. That's how well he's been playing at this point in time. The pick six was huge. He's a rookie. Sure, there's going to be mistakes from time to time, but he is certainly on the right track. I like what I've seen from Tariq Wollen. Nick, thanks for the question. Next one from Free a Little Homie from Alabama. As Forrest Gump would say, Alabama. Hashtag Seahawks. If Geno keeps balling out, will we still draft a QB in the first round next year or build up the defense or draft uh, Gabe replacement? Um, you know, I'll say this. The Seahawks have two first-round picks, one from Denver, one from Seattle, their own, obviously. I mean, at the way Denver's been playing, that looks like, as of right now, that could be a very decent pick. And so I think what you find yourselves in, that you have to use one of those picks on a quarterback, even if you like what you see from Geno Smith, what it does is it provides you time to get your quarterback ready that you don't have to rush your quarterback, your next quarterback, into things. You're not going to give Geno Smith a long-term contract. That's not going to happen. But what you can do is buy time, essentially. So, free little homie from Alabama. I think you draft a quarterback at this rate, based on the way he's playing right now. You bring Geno back next year, and you still draft more defensive players as well. I think all three of those things are true there. Thanks for the question. Simon writes in, should the Seahawks extend Geno Smith with how well he's played? I'm not agreeing to any extension this week or next week or the week following. This is something that Seattle will have to figure out in the offseason, as far as I'm concerned. There, there's no benefit to giving Geno a contract at this point in time. But if he plays at this level, if this keeps up like he's been right now, then... Yeah, Geno Smith will get extended for a year or two, but I'm not going beyond two years as far as a contract extension goes. If Geno is going to be around a long time, then it's going to have to be like what he's playing now and do the same exact thing next year as well for a potential long-term contract after that. But a, a long-term contract is, is not in the cards. What say you? Contract extension for Geno Smith? I mean, it wasn't too long ago we were talking about a QB competition with Drew Locke. Now he's clearly solidified himself as the starting quarterback. But beyond this year, I'm not saying contract extension. I'm not there yet. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments section. Why for yes, in for no, if the Seahawks should extend Geno Smith. Wayne writes in, hashtag Seahawks, what are the keys this week to a win over the Saints? Healthy dose of Walker and Penny. So 
We have our, our game preview video that I highly encourage you guys to, to check out when you ever get when you get the chance. And one of the things I would say as far as what you're alluding to, the healthy dose of Walker and Penny, is that this Seahawks offense is best when there's balance. When they establish the run, when Walker and Penny are both effective, but then when Geno Smith can air it out and do his thing as well. So for me, that's what I'm looking for is, is balance offensively. The defense, I mean, it's been cheeks the last few weeks. No, no question about it. If you're this defense, I mean, if you can just get any stops, any turnovers, just something, you can't be giving up 45 points every week and expect the offense to score 48. That's just not realistic. So for me, those are the couple things I'll focus on. The rest of those you can check out in our game preview video here on the channel. Next question comes from Ra Hector. Do you trust Woolen to cover team's number one wide receiver? Well, I'll put it this way. If not Tariq Wallen, then who? I mean, do I trust him? I don't have any other options right now. So I I trust him at a default, essentially. That's what I look at here. I like Tariq Wallen and his progress, but I mean, who else are you gonna do? Mike Jackson? Hell no. Mike Jackson's not playing good right now. He doesn't look like the Mike Jackson that we saw in the preseason. Um no, I mean, I, I trust him to an extent, like, yeah, you're going to lose some, but he's playing like the best corner on this team right now. Yeah, I, I trust him to an extent, if that makes sense, Raw Hector. Thanks for the question. Today's show is presented by BetUS, the exclusive sports book partner of Chat Sports. When you use the promo code Seahawks125, you'll get a 125% deposit bonus at chatsports.com slash bet. And you put $100 down, you get $125 to spend for free. Now, to celebrate that Seahawks win, which was just so fantastic against the Lions over the weekend, here is what we are going to do. If you email us, jersey at chatsports.com, and you are a new user to BetUS and put that $100 down for that 125% deposit bonus, we are going to give you a free Seahawks jersey. You have to be a new user. You have to put $100 down and get that 125% deposit bonus. You do those things, then a free jersey is on your way. There's, there, there's no joke to this. We're dead serious about this, folks. So go ahead and get your jersey now. Put that $100 down, and you're going to get the jersey. You're going to get $125 to spend for free, and you can do it all on BetUS. So... Here's what you need to do to break this down in the simplest of terms. Chatsports.com slash bet. Seahawks125 for the promo code. Put $100 down. First-time user. And email us, jersey at chatsports.com. And that jersey will be in your inbox. Do all those things, and the jersey will be on your way. Next question from Andrews wants to know, what is the Seahawks' biggest weakness? Well, I mean, I'll put it this way. So you scored 48. The offense has been able to put up points. The offensive line probably would have been this answer a couple weeks ago. But the offensive line looked a lot better last week. For me, it's it's the pass rush right now. And it it's it's that front seven, right? Getting to the quarterback and getting just those tackles. I mean, it, it's it's not been good defensively over the last couple weeks. In in particular, it's been that front seven. So for me, that's what I'm looking at. Their biggest weakness is getting to the quarterback. It's getting that pass rush going. What say you? What do you think is the Seahawks' biggest weakness right now? If you disagree with me, that's fine. If you think it's something else, let us know in the comments section what you believe is the Seahawks' biggest weakness at this point in time. Next question coming in from Nick. Nick writes, what's the best Defensive and offensive draft pick we could get in 2023. I say Xavier Henderson and Bryce Young. Um, no, Xavier Henderson's not that answer. Sorry. The best player in this draft. I have said this. I'll reiterate, and I'll say it again. The best player, far and none, without question, in the 2023 NFL draft is Will Anderson from Alabama. And I'm on record. I will say this. 
and I will say it again, that I don't care what my quarterback situation is. Will Anderson is too good to pass up. If you have an opportunity to draft Will Anderson, you draft Will Anderson, and then you figure out your quarterback situation. So, best defensive player, Will Anderson. Offensive player, I like C.J. Stroud better than I do Bryce Young. Bryce Young, not bad. Won the Heisman and everything last year. But I like C.J. Stroud a little more. So, those would be my answers. The Seahawks with two picks. Let's see what they do with them. Um, If you could get either one of those guys, I think you're going to hog heaven at that point. I mean, you'd feel pretty good if that's the case. Thanks, Dick, for the question. Nathan says, you think we'll see Ryan Neal up to speed and be able to run our big nickel again? You think losing Adams really changed all the defensive scheming we had planned this year? Yeah, it, it certainly changed a lot of things for this Seahawks team when it came to figuring out the, the defense. Uh, you know, and, and I'll say this, you know, with Jamal Adams, yes, the Seahawks have not been able to depend on him, and he's been injured, banged up so much his entire time in Seattle. But, you know, as I, I look at the depth chart, Ryan Neal, I think we had all hoped would be able to slide in with Quandre Diggs. But it's been Josh Jones, and Josh Jones has not played good. And so you would hope that you can find a a Band-Aid of some sorts. Look, you're not going to get the production you had with Quandre Dick or with, with, with Quandre Dick's, uh, rather <laughs> with uh, none other than, uh, than Jamal Adams. You're not going to get that production. But what you are going to hope for is whether it's Ryan Neal, whether it's Josh Jones, these guys – get better as the season goes along. You're not asking them to play at a starter level. And I know that a lot of people have been on Josh Jones for the way that he's performed and and all that. I, I, I understand. But you have to have realistic expectations of some sorts, if that makes sense. So, no, you're not going to get the same production you had with Adams. But, yes, you can ask a little bit more. So, we'll see. Hopefully things change, but I'll believe it when I see it. Thanks for the question, Nathan. Spintendo. If you could have a sideline beer with any Hawk or Seahawk head coach, who would it be? A sideline beer. That sounds good. A sideline beer with any Seahawk? Man, uh, I, could, I, I, could, I could tell you this. As far as uh, having a beer goes, if we're talking, you know, past or present, I think Richard Sherman and Marshawn Lynch would have always been fascinating guys to have conversations with. Now, of guys on this roster right now, I think I would I would love to talk to Drew Locke. I think Drew Locke is is an interesting dude. He's, you know, kind of a frat boy. I think he could probably put down a, a few beers of some sorts. I think, you know, Tyler Lockett is a very very smart guy, and you could have a very intelligent conversation with him. Maybe not a beer with Tyler Lockett, maybe like a a fine wine of some sorts, but as far as the coaching staff goes, Pete Carroll, a little bit of a weird dude. I don't even know if he drinks beer, but I feel like I could talk everything from, you know, world history to the 3-4 defense with Pete Carroll, and it would be interesting. So, uh, I know that's a long answer, but hopefully I've given you a couple options there, Spintendo. Last question before we go. Mark Sanchez writes, I put 500 on the Jayhawks last week in one big. Should I let it ride again? My Kansas Jayhawks. Mark Sanchez, my guy, coming through, getting some nice money there. Love to see it. My Kansas Jayhawks, 5-0, and taking on TCU this week. I don't feel good about the money line. I think it really, TCU's a good football team. They had a nice win against Oklahoma over the weekend. But as far as the the bet, which you can place on BetUS, by the way, uh, as far as the the spread goes, I believe Kansas is about a, a seven-point underdog this week. Take Kansas to cover. Put that $500 down. And when you win, let me know on social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, everything in between. You can follow me at Tyler Jones Live, and I'll see you next time here on Seahawks Today. 